So welcome to MySQL Operations with Docker. For the ones who don't know me, my name is Giuseppe Magia. Uh, I have a blog, The Data Charmer. I'm known uh, with this name on Twitter as well. I'm a, a community MySQL um, operator since a long time. I've been working for MySQL, the company itself, and for several companies uh, involved in the MySQL ecosystem. Um, today we are going to talk about uh, containers, and I just want to make sure that uh, you understand what I'm talking today is not a representative of my company, it's my own opinion. So if I make any mistakes on my own, don't blame my company for that. If there is something good, it's my fault. <laughs> so let's talk about the container. First, let's see what we have, what are our possibilities instead of containers. You know, if you if you use uh, uh, bare metal servers, you know this is the optimal solution. It's uh, a lot of uh, power, um, but you you need time to, to deploy them. You need to take them with trucks. You need to install them and install operating system, a lot of things. So, um, standalone servers uh, are useful but not the optimal solution. You can use standalone servers to run several things uh, at once. It's good because they are very fast, it's bad because things can clash. So, you cannot separate uh, one application from the other. You may have conflicts, you may have things that uh, uh, are supposed to play well together, but they don't. So even though this could be um, useful, sometimes, most of the times, it leads to problems. Then the solution that you usually have is virtual machines. Virtual machines means that you have full isolation. You just take something that looks and feels like an operating system, but is not, it's pure software. And you pay for this, you pay for this with performance usually, and also with a bit of time. So virtual machines don't deploy instantly, you need some, depending on how you are organized, you can take minutes to hours to have virtual machines available. So this is something that allows you to have a lot of servers doing uh, a lot of different things in isolation but not as fast as you would like to when you use uh, real servers. And then recently you have the idea of containers. And this co container is something that uh, looks a bit like a virtual machine but is not. It's uh, a thin layer of software that is uh, on top of a Linux machine. And I say Linux machine because so far, the container systems are mostly on Linux. And then the container contains only the libraries that are needed for your application. On top of those, this thin layer, there is uh, your application itself. So it looks and feels like a virtual machine, but the difference is that uh, this deploys in seconds, actually deploys in uh, a fraction of a second compared to virtual machines. One other thing that you can do with containers, you can share the libraries between, uh, uh, between containers. <coughs> so the, the net result of this is that uh, you can run the same thing that you run in a virtual server, but much faster. Because your application is using directly, or almost directly, the same kernel that uh, uh, um, a server deployed on bare metal wood. So what is a container? It's a virtualization system, but it's not a virtual machine. You don't need to install an operating system to, uh, to use a container. The container has already something that is uh, an operating system, or at least it's a layer of uh, libraries that make it feel like an operating system. And it works very close to the operating system. So compared to, the, to a virtual machine, this is way, way faster. 
it's less secure than a virtual machine. So you have less isolation that you uh, <coughs> would have with a virtual machine. Um, mostly, the thing that you need to know is that if you don't try it, you don't believe it. So this is the same thing that happened to me when I first started using a uh, script system after having used the C language to write uh, system maintenance code. You know, it's a madness. But the first time that I started using Perl and Python, I said, why I did this to myself? So the important thing to know is that uh, until you try it and you see, wow, I can have a, a new Ubuntu server in 0 0.5 seconds, or I can have a new Apache server in 0 0.2 seconds. This is wonderful. One thing that you need to understand, though, is this works only on Linux. So if you are trying to use Docker on a Mac, like this one, what you are doing, you are running Docker not on the Mac itself, but on a virtual machine that is running Linux. This is because Docker uses Linux. So I suggest that you take a pure Linux machine and you try that on yourself. But, you know, even on this, that we are using a virtual machine on top of uh, the uh, OS X uh, operating system, is still faster than a regular virtual machine. So you need to install Docker. If you are on Linux, uh, you use uh, apt get uh, or yarn, or you can uh, uh, use the uh, getdocker.com uh, script to install on your Linux. Whatever you do uh, is fine. The latest one will uh, will deploy the most common uh, current uh, version of Docker. On Mac or Windows, you need to use the Docker machine that I mentioned before. So. We're talking about uh, Docker using MySQL, or MySQL using Docker. So the first thing that you need to do, you have to deploy the MySQL image. This is not like deploy, um, downloading the full MySQL server, because this is a very slim uh, version of MySQL. So it has the bare minimum that you need to run a MySQL service. Um, this will... Uh, will be very fast. I mean, in my computer, I run this operation in about one minute, uh, just because I use a fast uh, network. But it should not be more than 15 minutes if you have a slow uh, internet connection. Once you have done this, the image is in your computer, and it doesn't need to happen anymore. So from now on, every time that you uh, deploy a MySQL um, container, it will be a master, matter of uh, half a second or less. If you want to know what is available, you go to hub.docker.com and look for MySQL. You will find two things. You will find one thing that is called the official MySQL image. This is official from, for Docker, meaning that it is the Docker team that is maintaining a MySQL image. And then you will have the thing that I will use today, uh, MySQL slash MySQL server, which is official from the MySQL team. So it's the MySQL team that is maintaining the real image uh, at Docker. Whatever you use, it more or less uh, works in the same way in the example that I'm going to show. So since uh, we are talking about beginners <laughs> here, people who have never used Docker, there are seven, seven things that you need to be aware of. The first thing I mentioned already, containing as a full system. It's not a virtual machine, but it feels like one. So there is something that is a real Linux uh, um, uh, operating system inside. Containers are always Linux. So whatever you use uh, uh, as a host operating system, what uh, is inside the container will uh, play well with the host container. You may have a host operating system that is Ubuntu and uh, use uh, um, a container that has 
was uh, Santos all the other way around. They will work together well. Um, the current uh, uh, MySQL image is based on Debian. Another thing to be aware of is that uh, the, the software inside the container is minimal. Don't expect to have everything that you find in a regular Ubuntu deployment. You will have only the minimum that is necessary to run MySQL. So if you need to have something else, you need to work on it. But more about this later. Another thing that is uh, proper of uh, the MySQL container is that uh, the installation requires a password. You either uh, pass a password during the installation on the command line, or you tell the container, generate a random password for me. This is only useful if you want to use a single container only once, and then you want to change the password manually. If you are running uh, lots of containers at once, don't do that, use the without uh, um, the password on the command line with a script, otherwise you will be in trouble. Containers are isolated. I mentioned before that they are less isolated than a virtual machine, but they are nonetheless isolated. It means that uh, you cannot access a container from the, um, from the host operating system unless you take steps to do that. So container will only communicate with other containers. Data storage can be tricky. So by default, the container will have the data inside the container itself. And since containers are designed to be volatile, so to be used and eventually disappear, actually you should be prepared for this case, keeping the data inside the container might not be the right thing to do. So there, are, there is a technique to do something different, and I will show that at the end. Um, configuration does not require you to modify the container. It's not like a virtual machine where you deploy the virtual machine, then you run Puppet or Chef, and you apply a formula to do what you need to do. In the, con the container should be ready to use the <coughs> moment you deploy it. And to do that, you deploy it with scripts or with uh, uh, orchestrators that will uh, deploy the, the containers with the files that you need to have at startup. So the container will uh, show up in the wild, ready to be used. So let's see a few examples. First, simple MySQL deployment. This is uh, how it looks like. You, you do a Docker run, name, and then you give a name that you will later use uh, from Docker. This is what I mentioned before, MySQL root equals password, uh, MySQL root password equals secret. You need to pass one password this way. Then minus D means this is a daemon, I want it to continue work after this command. And this is the name of the image that will, um, will be used. What you see here, that will change every time that you run that command, this is the identifier of the container. But you can identify the container with the name that you have passed here. So when you run this, you will have the MySQL server that is deployed with the default uh, um, values. Um, let's say that you want something different. Now, there is a um, nice trick in the MySQL uh, um, image that uh, if you pass more information after the run command, like in this case, you can have this pieces of information go directly to the server. So if I do like this, I will have not the, the default, I will have a server that has uh, logged in enabled and a server ID. Yes? So the question is, uh, can I have a way of uh, passing a secret, real secret <coughs> password to the container, not in the container as it is right now? I made a proposal to the team that is uh, maintaining the Docker system to have uh, a third option. So I mentioned that uh, you can 
either pass a, a, a password or tell the container to generate a password. The third option should be get a password from a file, which at the moment is not uh, available unless you modify the Docker file itself. So it can be done, it's not uh, so difficult to do, but it requires uh, the, the team to, to take action. So at the moment you can do this uh, using uh, deployment scripts, but it's not going to be 100% secure. Uh, the second way that you can pass uh, uh, options is uh, using a volume file. A volume file is something that resides on your uh, host operating system and is passed to MySQL. In this case, I have a minimal um, uh, MyCMF that I call minimal.cmf. I have only three things here, user equal MySQL, log bin, and server ID. So what I do, I say, the same thing that I did before, but in addition, I say minus V means uh, use this volume, and I gave uh, the path of my minimal cell um, file and the path of the file that I want to be replaced uh, inside the container. This way, instead of uh, reconfiguring the server uh, like I would do with the uh, puppet shift in a virtual machine. I reconfigure the server at runtime. So this server will always be born with the option that I want. And <clears throat> if I want to inspect the container, remember, this is a Linux machine, so I can enter inside. I can use this command, docker exec, exec means execute something inside the container, minus pi means uh, um, is a terminal interactive and the name of the container and what I want to execute. In this case, I want to execute a bash shell. Inside the bash shell, I run MySQL and I inspect. This is what I wanted. I wanted the server ID to be 100 and this is what is happening. Um, you will see when you download the slides that it will be online uh, later this evening, that there is uh, in uh, GitHub, uh, uh, a project that is called um, MySQL Replication Samples. And if you go to GitHub and look for Data Charmer, you will find it. And there is a lot of scripts to deploy MySQL in containers that you can try on. So I have uh, two minutes more that I want to use for a demo. And uh, I'm going to show you the deployment of uh, uh, three MySQL containers in replication using a script. So what you see in the screen now is the deployment of the containers. The, deploy the containers are just being deployed. Now I wait <coughs> 10 seconds for the installation to finish inside the containers. And then I start uh, <coughs> querying the containers. Are you okay? Yes or no? And uh, eventually, one of those will say yes, no, come on, don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Oh, okay. It was a bit shy. So now <laughs> they are deployed. Replication is uh, um, is done. I create a table and insert something inside. Sleeping ten seconds just to give time to replication to uh, work, and then I check if replication is okay, meaning that uh, the slaves have received the data, and they do. So exit code is zero. So uh, the reason why this was a bit slower than usual is because I'm using this inside the um, Mac operating system. And remember, this is not uh, like in a Linux uh, um, host. Docker here is running inside a virtual machine. Nonetheless, everything ran in one minute and a half. 
Question? I talk about the external storage that you do with the volume. The same, uh, the same thing that I did for the uh, configuration file, I do with the data directly. I cannot do this with the Mac because it's a virtual machine. I can do it with Linux where I say, instead of using the, virtual, the data directory inside the container, use the virtual machine that is in this path. And this is what I do. If you use the scripts that are in GitHub, they will uh, do exactly that. So uh, with this, thanks a lot. And uh, more questions? One. So uh, talking about external data directory, as I understand, if you upgrade MySQL binaries, you might need to do something to upgrade your, your data, some schema in, in the tables that MySQL itself uses. Uh, packages that, sh that get shipped with distributions do that automatically with a bunch of scripts. If I'm using MySQL container, is it going to do that for me, or do I have to upgrade my data for the new binary myself? And the um, upgrade uh, software will work uh, with the same that it they work uh, with uh, regular data. That's because right. uh, when you use a container, basically uh, the Docker has full control of the um, of the operating system. So it will the data will be changed the same way that uh, you would do with uh, a regular MySQL. Maybe you need to do something before installing the container. This is what you were asking. Yes. No, it doesn't do that by default. You need to do something external. All right. Thank you. And with this, I need to start.